Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees, and it is cold outside. We are here in South Florida, and for South Florida, it's, it's in the 40s. That's cold. And it's raining right now, or just rained. And there's a lot of uh, cold weather going on, and most of the country is used to this weather, but we're not used to it in South Florida. But today's video is about the fruit. Is the fruit used to it? I'm back at Tropical Acres Farms today, and I'm going to interview Alex about how mangoes do in cold weather or how the weather affects mango trees. And so he's going to discuss that. And not only in South Florida, the different climates, how mangoes are affected by cold weather, uh, by patterns of weather and the changing patterns of weather. Uh, so I know many of you are used to me just going around farms, throwing great fruit. Today, it's just Alex speaking some good, helpful information. So please listen all the way through. You'll pick up some good, some good knowledge. Uh, that he's sharing, and it's good to know, especially if you're uh, planting trees or figuring out what you want to plant, and where, how, and what. So uh, check this video out. Put your comments and questions below for Alex. I'm going to be back there again in uh, three weeks or so, and I'm going to get an update on this video about how to how weather affects growing mangoes and what exactly is going on this year. So check them out. Okay, everybody, here we are back at Tropical Acres Farms, and here's Alex next to his big. What kind of tree is this here? This is an Edward. Next to the big Edward tree. And uh, tell us, how old is the oldest tree on this farm? Uh, over 100, probably like 120 something years old would be the oldest tree. Most of them aren't that old though. And They're what old. variety is that one? It's a turpentine. Turpentine. Yeah, an old turpentine. Okay, so tell us uh, uh, about it, because you're, you're here at a jacket and we're in South Florida. Yeah. We've never seen you with a jacket on here and right. uh, I'm in a heavy jacket as well it's actually raining and it's cold right now right and we're in December so tell us how the uh, mangoes are affected by super cold weather like this right so um, mangoes can be uh, stimulated to flower by uh, a couple different uh, climatic factors uh, in the tropics uh, where it never gets cold uh, certain varieties of mangoes are influenced to bloom by, by drought stress. They're in prolonged periods of time without any rainfall, uh, where the weather's just super dry, and uh, that can get certain kinds of mangoes to bloom. But in subtropical latitudes like here, a lot of the varieties uh, that are grown up here require some cold weather stimulus to get them the flowers. So the amount of cold they need to achieve a bloom varies considerably from variety to variety. So this tree I'm standing in front of here is an Edward. We have a lot of Edward trees on this farm that the Sturrocks planted. And so um, Edward is a mango that flowers very easily. It doesn't require a lot of stress to get it to bloom. Um, so this cold front we're experiencing right now, today's the day after Christmas, it's uh, December 26th. We've had a cold front that's been ongoing for the last several days. The temperatures have been dropping into the 50s and 40s. Uh, yesterday was considerably colder than today, actually. Um, but the lows here in West Palm Beach have been in the low 40s. And uh, that's actually really good for getting uh, mango trees to flower. But the amount of nights that you get with those temperatures, let's say below 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the 50s or 40s Fahrenheit, um, makes a difference. So this cold front is going to be finished probably by Thursday. Today's Monday. Uh, so we will have le had less than a week of nighttime temperatures uh, with lows below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That will be enough to get mangoes like this Edward to, to bloom. Now we already have some bloom on these Edward trees. And Paul, if you want to bring the camera over here, there's actually stems that are about to flower here, okay? But this is not due to the current cold. So this is from whatever minimal amount of uh, stress this tree felt, you know, in the previous three weeks or so. Probably we had a few nights that were cool enough to get the Edward tree to flower a little more than it already has. But we have lots of stems on this tree that are currently dormant. So if we look here at this one, for example, these stems are still dormant. My expectation would be, and we can do a video on this in another two or three weeks from now, these stems will have swollen up and will have panicles starting to emerge out of them probably in about three weeks. That will be a response to the current cold front we're receiving right now. We'll probably see uh, fairly full blooms on the remaining Edward canopies. We've, there's about 
uh, 50 or 60 Edward trees on this farm. I would expect that their, the canopy that they have that has not flowered yet will flower along with our rosy gold trees, our rosa mangoes, uh, and our dwarf Hawaiians should all flower off of this. And some of the other varieties will flower too, but there will also be lots of other trees here that will do nothing off of this. The one good thing from it though is that it could help keep them dormant, keep their stems at rest instead of flushing vegetative growth. And then hopefully sometime maybe in the second half of January, we'll start getting cold weather again because the projection uh, from now is that after Thursday, we're gonna have a solid week of temperatures with the nighttime lows uh, in the upper 60s or even low 70s. So that's like 13 degrees above what the historical average low would be right here in West Palm Beach. It would be about 57 degrees at this point, 57 degrees Fahrenheit at this point in the winter and you know into, um, into January. So pretty substantially above what the low would, would be during this time. And uh, that's not going to encourage the trees to flower. So we really need some more cold weather to show up at some point, hopefully in, in January, that's going to get everything else flowering maybe in February or March. So, but this is hopefully going to be the start of, uh, of some more bloom in about three weeks. So what does that mean for people that are growing mangoes north of West Palm Beach where we're at? Yeah, so some of those people will get not only colder temperatures, which may not be desirable actually, because you don't want temperatures in the 30s, especially the low 30s when you get, uh, you're floating with freezing temperatures. But their duration of the cold will probably be a little longer. So instead of like five nights of cold, they might get like eight or nine or 10. And that can be adequate to get their trees to flower, and they might see a, a better bloom response, provided they didn't see any damage from from possible freezing temperatures. Um, so temperatures, once they drop below 40, uh, can have a negative impact, actually, uh, especially on existing blooms. So if they had trees that had flowers out, uh, those really cold temperatures can actually result in, um, um, you know, uh, staminate pollen, uh, embryo uh, uh, abortion. So uh, you don't want that if you're trying to get fruit. So what I've found is that a lot of times they will have the adequate amount of bloom stimulus in central Florida and West Florida, but because it stays cold, it actually discourages the trees from uh, pushing out blooms immediately. So it takes a little longer sometimes for those blooms to come out, um, even though that during the same period of time that we're receiving cold weather, um, they're getting that cold weather for a little longer and it's providing more of a stimulus for those those trees to bloom so now it's raining right now not yeah. too bad at the moment but it is raining yeah so how does the rain play into all of this? it's not desirable at all uh, ideally we would have no rain that's supposed to be our dry season so we really should be seeing very little rain that hasn't been the case for the last however many winters though we've had pretty relatively wet winters uh, if we were to go to another part of the mango growing world right now, Lucknow, India, or Nayarit, Mexico, Pacific Coast of Mexico, or um, some of the other tropical countries they grow mangoes in, it would be bone dry. They would have no wet weather at all, not a drop of rain, often for months. It's not like that in Florida. We do have a dry season, and this would normally be part of it. But we do receive periodic rainfall here, and that's what makes it a little less ideal for mango production here because of that. Mangoes are sensitive to minute differences in weather patterns. So ideally, we wouldn't be receiving this wet weather right now, and it would be a lot drier. Um, but here in Florida, that's just our weather pattern here. We will get some rainfall when it's, when it's not optimal. So fortunately, we shouldn't receive a lot of rainfall. Uh, in the next few days, but you know, it's something, uh, and I prefer nothing. <laughs> so, I still, prefer it dry. you have a commercial grow here. So, for people, backyard growers, uh, are mangoes still the easiest tree to grow here, fruit wise, in South Florida, or does it get more complicated as the weather patterns? Change? Yeah, I, I think probably this is a, some territory that nurseries like us need to start getting a little bit more detailed about, depending on where somebody's growing their mango tree. Uh, because what we recommend to somebody maybe in coastal Miami-Dade isn't going to be the same that we recommend to somebody in Orlando, Florida, or Tampa, or whatever. There's factors of humidity, and there's factors of uh, how easily are they going to bloom. 
So the further southeast you go in Florida, the more progressively difficult it becomes for certain kinds of mangoes to flower. And so uh, it's something that we probably could do a better job of in terms of uh, what we recommend to people. I wouldn't, for example, recommend a, a variety to somebody in Miami uh, that is hard to bloom, like sweet tart, for example, one of my favorite mangoes, but the trees have a hard time flowering in these warm winters that we get. But somebody that's up in Orlando uh, or Tampa probably is going to have a much easier time getting that tree to flower. Uh, similarly, you know, somebody, let's suppose, that's uh, in coastal uh, Palm Beach or Broward County, like in Deerfield Beach, a mile away from the ocean or less, might want to grow rosy gold because it flowers easily in that warm climate. Uh, whereas somebody in uh, Clewiston, Florida, might not want to grow rosy gold because it's disease prone and it's not going to get that early fruit that it can over in that little coastal zone. Um, and there's other varieties too that I could think of that I would say try in, in a coastal zone. That's for zone. now because as the weather patterns change, that information could change as well. True, right? yeah, but our, our weathers, uh, our, I'm sorry, our winters have been very, very warm for over a decade now. So this is a long term pattern, it would seem. And uh, you know, it's not new. It's, this is not like something that we've just encountered in the last couple couple seasons. It's been going on for a while. Um, you know, I mentioned how like the uh, nighttime lows will be more than 10 degrees above the historical average for at least a week. And actually it was like that for uh, much of the month of December until this cold front showed up. So our winter so far has been very warm compared to uh, historical average in South Florida. If you look up the historical average low temperatures for late November and December. Um, so in Central Florida and West Florida, the temperatures tend to be colder during cold fronts and outside of cold fronts. So it affords an opportunity for people to grow certain kinds of mangoes uh, that I might want to grow more of or wish I could grow more of or at least get them to fruit more. Like we have several Bombay mango trees. I like to use that as an example of a mango that needs more cold weather usually to get it to have a full bloom. So if I was over on the West Coast, I, I might try more of those uh, varieties that I would uh, dissuade somebody from growing in West Palm Beach maybe. Um, so, From what your experience is with fruit trees, uh, if you were a backyard grower and you just got your own house, Besides mangoes, what would, uh, considering the weather patterns now here in South Florida, yeah, what would be the top three trees? Not mangoes, other fruits. That other fruit trees, yeah. You, you uh, I like bananas, and I think that they, uh, you know, obviously they don't need cold weather to flower, so uh, and fruit. So obviously you can get two crops from them in the year if you're maintaining the mat properly. Um, but there's a lot of inputs that go into them. There's other crops like sapodilla. Sapodilla does not need cold weather to flower and fruit, so uh, it can fruit pretty prolifically here in South Florida. Um, Mame, uh, another great one that can grow in very tropical environments. Then there's some of these extra tropical things that people have been reluctant to try in Florida for a long time, like cacao, um, breadfruit. Uh, some of these other things that are, are hypersensitive to cold, and you might be able to actually get them the fruit okay here now. Uh, because you don't have to protect them as much from really cold winters. Uh, and then there's things that are much more difficult than mango to fruit down here these days, like uh, lychee, for example. Um, so I'd much sooner plant a mango than a lychee in, in the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade. So, um, so mangoes have certainly not lost their place at the table. It's just maybe a, a different uh, outlook in terms of um, how we grow them and what which varieties we grow depending on region and uh, that gets pretty specific it's like it's not it's not reasonable to expect like little mom and pop nurseries to know all these like fine details and be able to make these kind of precise recommendations to people in terms of like what kind of mangoes they should be growing in their area but larger nurseries like ours or um or you know, rare fruit clubs that sell a lot of trees, the general public probably could provide um, more precise information to people about what type of mango will do better in their part of Florida. And that will assist them in having more success and getting fruit from their trees more years than not. And that's really the goal. 
you know, you want them to have a positive experience with the mango and be able to have plenty of fruit to share with their family and friends and whatever. Um, you don't want to be selling them trees that are going to struggle because of one reason or another, or maybe because of disease problems in, in a more humid area, or because the tree just doesn't bloom in that warmer part of Florida than it does in the cooler part of Florida. So. All right, two questions. I recently interviewed somebody who's in Georgia in the cold weather, and they were growing trees in their house with LED lights. Uh -huh. Now here in South Florida, if somebody has a condo mango, let's say a small one that will grow in a pot, yeah. and the weather's not uh, acting the best conditions, for that week, can they bring it in their house? Would that make a difference? I know we're not looking at commercial, but for... Yeah, I, I mean, like, I think that's a good idea is to have an option to bring the tree inside if your climate is a little less ideal for growing mango trees, maybe on the fringe in terms of like, okay, most of the year, 90 something percent of the year, it's fine, but you might get these few days where there's a threat of freezing weather and uh, having that ability to just bring it inside for a little while and still provide it with some daylight, you know, in the form of, of those lights that you were talking about is beneficial and a way for people to grow mangoes in a few areas that they might otherwise not touch them. So, okay. And the other one is there are places here that nobody does anything to their trees. There's a whole actually road that you know of uh, right there in Cecil, that whole street, that place. Yeah, the old Garnet Orchard. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's praying in them. Nobody's taking care of them. And every year, the trees seem to be loaded. Well, some of them are. I mean, certain mangoes do fine on neglect. It's absolutely true. I mean, you can go around the neighborhoods here near us, and you'll find big old mango trees that fruit seemingly every year. They don't actually fruit every year, but they, it seems that way, you yeah. know, when you drive by them all the time. Um, you know, especially really productive varieties that have natural good resistance to powdery mildew and anthracnose. In this zone here, we don't get a lot of anthracnose. The big threat to fruit production from a disease standpoint is usually powdery mildew, at least to start with. Bacterial spot and rot become a concern later on. So certainly, yes, that's, that's true. Certain varieties of mangoes can be left to their own devices and they can fruit well. And some mangoes can't, or at least generally can't. And I have plenty of them here that if we do nothing to them, they're not going to make a lot of fruit for us. Um, so we have to take extra good care of those. And it's good to be aware of that sort of thing before you go planting a mango tree and not just look and see some of these big old monsters that have tons of fruit on them and assume that your tree's going to behave that way um, if you just go buy any tree. Okay, we're going to call this video How Weather Affects Growing Mangoes. Yeah. Anything else you want to close with or add? Um, well, I look forward to doing this video again in maybe three plus weeks or so, and we'll see what kind of response we get from the varieties that we discussed um, to this cold front, and as well as how some of our fruit that is already on our trees, because we do have little mangoes on some of our trees right now, see how some of those have progressed, if they've progressed, and hopefully by that point, uh, we'll see what the weather's going to look like for the second half of January. And, what kind of hope we have for a, a, a longer cold front here that might spring everything and get everything to flower, which is what we hope for. So. All right. Well, we'll come back and we'll follow up. Thank you so much, Alex. Everybody, I'm putting his contact information below. Tropical Acres Farms, check him out. All right, everybody, there it was. That was Alex at uh, Tropical Acres Farms. I'll put his link below the video. Uh, great information, uh, and it's good to know these things. Uh, and. Uh, if you're up north or, or at least uh, mid-central Florida, uh, maybe you got some from that video that'll be helpful information to you. If you're in South Florida, we just got to plant the trees and do the best we could do, right? All right. Uh, if, this if this video interests you or there's other topics you want to see me cover with Alex or uh, any topics at all, post them below the video in the comments. Until then, everybody, if uh, like and subscribe if you liked and you want to subscribe. Have a great day and keep growing.